Okay, seems almost everyone is here. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Horizon Weekly Insider number 35. Today is April the 9th, and happy Thursday to you all. Please remember that this call is being recorded and it's going to be available in our Horizon podcast as well as in our YouTube channel for you to check out later. Also, please remember to ask your questions so we can have our uh, regular mentee uh, session with the Q&A uh, session at the end. Let's just start with the updates from the engineering department. And now I'll pass the word now to Luca. Thank you, Angie. This is uh, the week after the publication of our Ginger library, the new ZK Snarks library we published on Tuesday last week. And uh, the great news is that Ginger is uh, gaining attention in the zero knowledge space, which keeps growing day after day. Something I'd like to add, always related to the same topic, uh, is that we contributed to the Zex uh, project by fixing a security issue in a gadget. And uh, that issue was also communicated to Zex developers. And uh, the fix was then integrated there as well. Uh, there are other two libraries that are coming up soon. We talked uh, about uh, these uh, already in uh, one of the last weekly insiders. But just to remember and to give a little bit of context, one is uh, Zendu Sidechain CryptoLib that is based on uh, Ginger and uh, will be used by the Zendu Sidechain SDK. For example, it will be used to compute Poseidon hashes, fast Merkle trees process. The other one is Zendu Mainchain CryptoLib. Similarly to Zendu Sidechain CryptoLib, this one is responsible of making available to Mainchain Core the cryptographic primitives implemented in Ginger and moreover allowing Mainchain nodes to validate the certificate proofs to enable Sidechain backward transfers. So for this, uh, um, we are uh, targeting uh, next week for the publication. Last but not least, we are happy to announce that our Zendu paper was first submitted, then reviewed, and then after accepted for a presentation at an important conference in Singapore taking place in July. So the conference is Block Up 2020. It's a very big and important one. Um, later, I'll also paste the link in the, in the chat. Uh, I'd like to introduce Alberto now uh, to let him add any info on uh, what I just said, but also to go on speaking about the most recent progress on the Sidechain SDK side. Alberto? Oh, yes, thanks, Luca. Yes, just uh, regarding uh, the issue uh, found uh, um, by Horik uh, uh, about, let me say, the, 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 the missing constraints in the FP, FP gadget. I mean, this is part of um, uh, a bigger work that we are doing by, let me say, both reviewing all of uh, the current existing gadgets and moreover, let me say, uh, extend the functionality uh, of, uh, of the library. So um, we expect to have additional um, say optimizations in, in the code and, and addition, obviously, uh, to the library itself. OK, um, regarding uh, uh, the SDK, OK, we have started the review of the uh, LATOS consensus implementation. Uh, so uh, this is, um, let me say, the the, um, the full implementation of uh, the two chain consensus. Let let us call it in this way, and this is the the one that I explained uh, during one of the last uh, weekly insider. So um, currently, uh, we already have a full implementation of it and uh, a pull request uh, uh, was ready and and a, re a first session of review has been done okay um, uh, we identified um, um, some um, let me say changes that should be uh, made in implementation and in particular to prevent a very tricky issue uh, that and the curious thing is that it, this kind of issue was also part uh, in the original Bitcoin uh, implementation. So, uh, in particular, uh, having 
separated the header from uh, in the sidechain block. I mean, the header from the 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 content of the block, and having uh, and using Merkle trees for um, binding the content of the block to the header. So there could be uh, uh, some situation where um, the data could be manipulated in a way that lead to the same Merkle root of one of these data that is uh, contained in the header. Uh, and uh, these, if it is not managed properly, for example, if we ban the uh, hash of the block because we say, okay, the data inside is not, uh, is not valid, in reality, we, are, we could ban also a valid block because, uh, and maybe I will be more specific. Let's say we have a Merkle tree that which number of leaves is not power of two. So uh, the algorithm that we have and also we have in mention, I mean, we'll add, uh, we replicate the last leaf. So uh, an attacker could manipulate the Merkle tree uh, by sending instead of let me say the transactions uh, the real transaction will send another additional transaction that is the copy of the last one so the merkle tree will be the same the merkle root will be the same sorry but the last transaction will be just a copy so will let me say a double spend of the previous one so at the end the code will mark this sidechain block this block let me say in general as invalid but in reality, it's not invalid. It's just the data that is invalid that lead to the same uh, to the same uh, Merkle root. So this is a quite tricky situation that should be managed. Otherwise, uh, an attacker could, could, can use it for uh, mark valid block uh, as invalid block. So convince another another um, another node that a valid block is an invalid one. And so, um, and so we are performing some changes in the current implementation to keep to 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 manage this this situation. And I mean, um, it's not going to be to take a lot of time, but uh, for sure, it's uh, um, let me see, uh, it's something that uh, they are already working on it and is going to be reviewed again. Okay. Uh, Regarding, uh, uh, let me see, consensus-related topic, uh, we are uh, also um, aligning the implementation of nonce calculation by using uh, um, the VRF output as from Ouroboros specification. And this is going to be completed by the end of the next, next week. Okay, uh, always on the SDK side, uh, the forger and the backward transfer implementation are also ready to be uh, reviewed, but uh, these are going to be seen after having merged the Latus consensus pull request, because many parts are based on that, so uh, it will be uh, quite difficult to, to, to see before then. Uh, Always about the SDK, uh, in parallel, we are also um, proceeded with the integration of the VRF implementation of Sidechain CryptoLib, uh, because as, it, as you probably can remember, uh, we have the VRF implementation in Rust, um, and this is uh, in the Sidechain CryptoLib. Uh, and moreover, uh, we are also integrated in, in our SDK uh, the APIs that are needed for creating, uh, let me say, the proof for the epoch. So, as you can remember, at the end of the issue epoch, we will create a proof. In particular, for beta, we will use a, a, a this new circuit that we have, we have created. This is a simple uh, uh, a sample circuit that just verify a threshold signature. So. Uh, but obviously, uh, also this is in the Rust side uh, and is using also Gingerlib, and this should be uh, also integrated uh, in the SDK. So we are currently also working uh, on on this part for integrating in the, in the SDK. Obviously, uh, also uh, uh, the main chain changes are are going on, and. Uh, um, and also on the um, on the uh, uh, gingerlib uh, other let me say 
we are proceeding also about uh, uh, optimization about Merkel tree uh, and documentation. And uh, should be everything from my side. Thanks, Luca. Alberto, thank you for providing all these updates. I'll uh, finish just by adding that uh, uh, the sphere by horizon integration of sidechain comets is uh, ongoing uh, as well. Back to you, Angie. Thank you, Alvaro and Luca, for the updates. Let's continue with Chronic for the infrastructure updates. Thank you, Angie. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, infrastructure improvement and what's uh, going on in the back end. Um, most of the time, any infrastructure work uh, isn't noticed by anybody, and that is how it should be. Um, so we are working on um, making all of our servers more, more stable, more performant, constant improvements. A uh, couple of weeks back, we uh, migrated our block and store uh, to a new server. Um, this was a live migration, so there, there wasn't actually an impact on availability. Everything uh, went smoothly. And um, we're saving also money through this, so we were able to consolidate some uh, some servers. Uh, and um, the next big um, infra project is essentially doing the same for the faucet. So uh, the next weekend we have a uh, migration of the faucet to new servers planned. Uh, this will uh, unfortunately have a very short interruption to services because uh, for this project we can't do a live migration just because of the amount of usage we see. So we need to do a database export and import on the new server. Um, but uh, with the migration we will see a large uh, performance improvement. Um, so uh, we plan on running it on uh, larger servers, uh, have a lot more flexible system as well where we can um, scale scale up pretty easily and uh, also scale it out to multiple servers if need be. And we're also going to add a uh, testnet faucet. So um, people and developers that need testnet coins to test something will be able to get them through the faucet and don't have to ask on GitHub. Uh, on the node tracking side of things, a um, couple of weeks back, we or last week, we had an outage at OVH. This was um, a global outage in the network, uh, which unfortunately can happen, but uh, the impact was limited. So we had around half an hour of unavailability and uh, all of the uh, issues, exceptions, downtimes were cleaned up. Uh, back to you, Angie. Awesome. Thank you, Chronic. Let's continue now with Spencer for the help desk updates. Good day, everyone. Uh, this, <clears throat> this has been a busy week for the service desk. A new feature was introduced last week, mentioned last week, the use of verified addresses on the faucet. This has led to an increase in faucet tickets as some users are needing guidance on using or creating verified addresses. Customer satisfaction remains strong, 4.7 stars out of a possible five based on 42 user reviews. And that's the report from the service desk. Thank you, Spencer. Let's continue with Gustavo with UX updates. Hi, everyone. As uh, Chronic pointed out, this week we have the faucet servant migration to a more robust infrastructure. And uh, one thing that uh, Mac and Chronic also did, they dockerized the project, which basically makes it more easy to deploy, but uh, it also adds enhanced security to the faucet. So thank you, Mac and Chronic, for doing that. So still on the faucet, we are making improvements on the address verification guides. So some of our users have been struggling, and we've been using that feedback to improve our guides. We also have the HODL bonus feature ready to go live next week. And uh, we are already working for a new set of features for the faucet in which I can yet not yet um, spoil. Otherwise, Jonathan wouldn't be too happy with me. And uh, we continue working on HDN Academy and supporting marketing tasks in regard to web dev work. And that's all. Thank you, Gustavo. Let's continue with Rowan for the BD updates. Thanks, Angie. Hello, everyone. Um, so from my side, one of the tasks that's been ongoing for a little while now is kind of coming to a head on the operations side. That is a kind of diversification of our banking partners, another back office type task. Uh, our banking partner for the past three years, um, we've had kind of one main banking partner and they've decided they no longer want to be working with us. 
I guess they're de-risking their portfolio and see us as uh, a crypto type organization that they clearly don't want to be associated with for whatever reason. So we're in the midst of opening uh, a variety of new accounts. So we're solving this problem in kind of two ways. The first way, uh, we're opening two new mainstream bank accounts. So that gives us a kind of redundancy there. And the, the real long-term solution is to uh, move our business to a crypto-friendly banking organization. Um, because not all banks out there think that we are a bunch of back alley criminals. So there is an organization out there, in fact, there's multiple that want to do business with up and coming uh, technology companies such as Zen Blockchain Foundation, uh, and we're moving over to that one. So a thanks to Rolf and Michelle for setting up the two new mainstream accounts, and a thanks to Dean for kicking off the process with a crypto-friendly banking partner. We've got a whole bunch of kind of administrative type information that needs to be provided to show uh, exactly what we need and, and provide all the info they require. Uh, but that's pretty much complete now, just the final, final application process underway. Um, back to something a bit more interesting. On the business development side, we have been building up, uh, to kind of use a term that was <laughs> turned into a bit of a meme, uh, I think by Marco after Jonathan did a little hand dance in one of the recent bi-weeklies. Um, we're building up a funnel. We have been for quite a long time. And what we do is we periodically review everything that is in our integration funnel. And thank you for posting the GIF. That's absolutely perfect. Um, so it's really important that we have a really nice full funnel to complete a kind of pipeline of integrations. And we need to make sure that's topped up routinely so that we have uh, a good number that are continuing to come through. Obviously, everything that enters the funnel doesn't come into into reality. It doesn't come to fruition. Maybe 5 or 10% of the conversations we have end up in an integration. So it needs to be topped up routinely to make sure that there's a constant stream. At the moment, we're in a kind of stage where we revisit what's in there and we try and figure out what is attractive to us at this point in time. So obviously, we don't have a huge budget. We're not looking to throw massive stacks of money at different companies for integrating Zen. We're looking to kind of create mutually beneficial relationships with organizations that share similar outlooks. Um, so there's synergy between us and, and hopefully create really good integrations that are beneficial to the entire Horizon ecosystem. So we're revisiting what's in there. We're trying to figure out which ones are the priority for the next quarter. Uh, obviously, last quarter, the big important ones were Coinbase Custody, um, Metal, which kind of slipped just out of the quarter. That went live, obviously, just a couple of days ago, um, and also Abra. So we're now trying to see which ones are going to be the big hits for Q2. Um, just off a call with the team over at Flipside, trying to make sure that they are ingesting all of the data uh, from our, our GitHub to make sure that they are reflecting a score that's accurate towards our developer activity. So that was a really interesting call. And a big thanks to the guys at Flipside for, for taking that and taking the time to chat with us. And that's pretty much it from me at the moment. Um, I'll pass over to... Vano, if he's on, I presume he is, because he's just been pushing out a bit of an update on the exchange side. Uh, hello. Hello, everyone. Thanks, Rowan. Uh, so um, we started publishing at 4 o'clock hub, and our first post uh, is already live there, um, with the second one coming for tomorrow. Uh, so we are improving our reach to Russian language community there. Also, I'm busy updating information about us with Crypto Insights uh, platforms and submitted several updates these days. Hopefully, they will be accepted and published soon. And that's important because uh, some of them are like uh, not very ac accurate and relevant nowadays. Uh, and then uh, our virtual meetup is also planned for the next Friday, and I'm eager to see how it goes. And as Rowan said, uh, our last integration was by textbook, a Russian exchange, which we announced, and they are already added to our exchanges page. That's all from me. Back to you, Angie. Thank you, Rowan and Vano. Let's continue with Lucy for the marketing updates. Hello everyone. Uh, so uh, from the marketing, uh, we actually we are hosting a uh, uh, an AMA with MetalPay today at two uh, two p.m. Eastern time. Uh, so Rowan will be the guest, and uh, the AMA will be on MetalPay's Telegram group. 
So uh, please join at AMA and to show your support for Rowan and Horizon. Um, and then also, uh, as you all know, that we have been doing this uh, weekly insider for quite some time now. Uh, and we also share the rec uh, record of uh, uh, this live call on YouTube and podcast. Uh, so uh, we know that for every weekly insider, Rob and Rob often uh, give their final thoughts, which is always a very, a very nice uh, summary of the call. Uh, and then also a, a, a high level insight of you know, uh, most updated uh, project position and goals and, and whatever they want to address uh, to the community. So we've got feedback uh, from team and community that people really like the final thoughts and, and we've uh, found it, uh, you know, they found it to be very helpful for them to better understand the uh, uh, development of the project. So, so we created a, a dedicated collection uh, on YouTube uh, called Leadership insights uh, to highlight these messages uh, so more people can listen to them can hear them so uh no pressure you know no pressure there uh, Robert Ruff. <laughs> and then uh, um and the other thing is that we have added more new products uh, even more new products onto our store and right now we are offering 10 percent off a store-wide discount uh, for the month or for april um, and uh, uh, so on social media, we currently have a social media campaign, which is very fun. Uh, in the light of uh, COVID-19 situation, uh, many people are staying at home and, and then many are going through some tough time. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's not an easy scene mentally uh, sometimes as well. So during this time, it's, it's, you know, particularly important to keep our spirit high and then stay positive. So we're asking people that, you know, what they do to stay zen. So whether it's read that book they they uh, never had time to read or pick up a hobby or learn a new skill. So we are getting a lot of responses and many of them are very, very interesting. Um, so, you know, um, I, I would love for everyone to to participate. And then on top of that, we are also uh, throwing some uh, uh, some prize Um Will be uh, randomly pick out uh, participants entries uh, and then uh, ten winners and then each them, uh, each of them uh, we will uh, uh, give one zen to uh, uh, to the winner and then uh, on top of that for social media I would like to give a uh, some growth updates so our Twitter is very very close uh, to sixty thousand followers and we have over seventeen hundred uh, thousand followers on Facebook, which is pretty strong growth since just two weeks ago. Uh, and then Medium is over 5,300 followers. And then Instagram, we have over 6,000 followers. These two platforms are very, very new. So we are you know, very happy to see uh, the nice growth in a such a short period of time. And lastly, we featured a community star yesterday, Marco Jen uh, Jenkins, uh, on our blog. So Marco is a newer member of the uh, uh, community, but he has been really active. Uh, check out the blog post about Marco and then get to know our community members and then how and why they get involved with Horizon. And then we hope to inspire more people to, uh, to uh, become an active part uh, of our community. And that's it from me. Thanks. Uh, pass on to you, Jonathan. Hey, everybody. Good morning. So on the growth side, uh, we're seeing a lot of positive feedback on address verification. Uh, people really like, uh, obviously, the added bonus, but they also like, they really like um, interacting with the wallet. And we've had really good feedback on Sphere by Horizon. Um, we're working on improving the UX. So we have seen a, a couple of tickets basically um, giving us some improvements on how we can make the signing process easier. Uh, so for example, some people were confused why they didn't have the sign button on Sphere. Well, it turns out that they didn't have the latest version. So we added that warning before downloading uh, Sphere is you need to have the latest mm -hmm. version. So little things like that, that we're constantly iterating on. We probably are making one to three changes uh, a week uh, on, on the faucet to improve the user interface. And that's a testament to the fact that we actually listen to the users and care and try to make, uh, try to make everyone's lives easier. So uh, one of the big things you'll notice for this week is the new claim screen. 
So the new claim screen is a lot better than it was just three days ago. It's clear, it's specific, it shows you which bonuses you're earning. It shows you how you can increase your bonuses. And this was basically a combination of Gustavo and uh, Linda doing a great job understanding customers, listening to customers. And uh, I mean, it really just looks beautiful. So also, as Chronic mentioned, we have a migration over the uh, over the weekend. So there might be a little bit of downtime. Um, so if you come and it's down, just come back maybe an hour later and it should be fine. Also, uh, six days left in this month's giveaway. So make sure to enter the giveaway before it's over. And that's it for me. Thanks. Thank you, Lucy and Jonathan. Let's continue with Rosario for Product and Engineering. Hi, guys. I uh, hope everybody's staying safe with the uh, COVID issues that are going around the world. And I have to say that I, I love seeing the engagement on the How to Stay Zen. And just love seeing the community and the people behind our, our community and what they're doing. Uh, so it's just wonderful. So thank you, Leslie, for that idea and um, uh, Erica and uh, Lucy for making it happen. So my focus is, uh, is uh, or has been uh, as of late, uh, to continue uh, ensuring that we have smooth workflows across departments. And I have to say it's, uh, it's going very well. And just when I was feeling comfortable, we identified additional areas for improvement, and that's just going to be a constant iteration. So we should never feel like we're perfect and, and not improving. So uh, right now, one of my focuses is, is going to be to work with Chronic and ready to, to cl uh, clean up uh, GitHub and getting the PMs more involved in, in that process so we can identify uh, issues to work on uh, that will funnel into our monthly priorities. And that's going to be the, the Jonathan funnel, you know, just, uh, just pretend like I'm moving my, my hands here. Uh, also, I'm, I'll be working with Lucy to create a competition for the sitechain beta and HDE. So this is going to be a, a combined campaign to promote both uh, systems. Uh, and of course, this uh, it's going to be a competition to have the community uh, vote on a proposal for a community-developed sidechain. So I'm just really excited to see the creativity of our developer community developers and see uh, what we can do and how much budget we can uh, dedicate to have this. And that's it for now, guys. Uh, stay safe out there. Thank you, Rosario. Ralph, any updates or comments? Uh, yeah, I do. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, we uh, are proceeding along on the funnel and bringing in new users and all that's a, a, a great thing. And I feel that sometimes it's worthwhile to step back and say, why are we doing this? What are we actually trying to do? What are we working to accomplish? And blog posts are a good way to do that. These types of uh, like the Weekly Insider or the Quarterly Update are a good way to do that also. Um, but it's really important on why we're emphasizing the funnel and the sphere wallet so much because it brings new users into crypto through the horizon path. And that's a safe and pleasant path. We've got a good community. We've got good support, good tools, solid development team, and a plan for continued improvement that we're executing on successfully. And that's a big thing in, in the crypto world. There's many people that want to participate in crypto, and this gives them a way to do that, which is legitimate. And a funnel is a nice, safe way to learn about crypto, how to use it safely, how to get familiar with the tools, the ideas. And there's both short-term and long-term thinking on how to use the, the funnel. So short-term, we can say, well, you know, keep your savings in crypto or you know, 5 to 10% of your savings in crypto. Convert it to your local currency when you need to spend it. And that's a good common crypto uh, discussion because in, in the big scheme of things, it's going to be less inflationary than many government currencies. You can start with a small percentage of your savings, learn how to work with the volatility of diff different crypto prices compared to the local government currencies. Longer term, uh, the volatility is going to be overridden by uh, the fact that the crypto prices go up compared to government currencies. 
but you got to learn how to work with that. But longer term, the sidechain applications are for personal freedom enhancing applications. That's the way I like to term it. Um, and there's many things that are done by governments and large businesses that will be able to be done in a secure, verifiable, globally distributed way using Horizon. And we've had examples of what sidechain applications are, and they're going to go in a lot of different directions. And I bet a bunch of them will be things that we haven't thought about yet, but somebody will see that there's a need, develop it, and get it out there. But first off, rapid and private payments. And you know, rapid and private payments, think of a uh, secure, distributed Venmo application running on your mobile phone, but using a sidechain. Um, Small item ownership documentation. So think of car registrations and house titles, but for phones, pets, small business shares, all sorts of other things. If we have that type of ownership documentation with transfer, and there's going to be a a bunch of things required to make that work well, but that's okay. We've got time and we've got the ability to do that. Personal achievement tracking, so certifications, diplomas, um, you publish that you've got a certain certification and have it verified by the certifying authority, and it's all there on the blockchain for people to see. And then, of course, financial applications, escrow, international money transfers, and government currency equivalents, uh, sometimes known as stable coins, but uh, you know, I'm not sure stable is the right word for government currencies. So we're making progress on all these areas. Uh, and we should recognize that it's a multi-year roadmap. And one of the things that I like is that what we do well is we develop the applications and then get lots of people to use them so we can make these applications uh, beautiful, easy to use, bulletproof, uh, identify all the security and scaling issues so that as we add in all these other types of things, we'll have a software foundation to build them on. So that's back to why it's so important to have the funnel, gain new users, and um, you know get them familiar with the tools like, like Sphere. So uh, I'm really excited about uh, how everything's progressing. Thanks. Thank you, Rolf, for the words. And now let's welcome Rob for the final part. Thanks, Angie. Um, okay, guys. So uh, I'll start off by saying I also love the How to Stay Zen convo on Twitter. So please check it out. Uh, It's really cool how much engagement we have. And you can tell engagement by real human beings, which is pretty cool. Um, Also very much enjoyed Markle's interview on our blog. Uh, The big message there was take some time to slow down and appreciate the moment. Hard to or sometimes too easy to forget in this type of environment. Um, And let me see, let let me power through some of the other things quickly, because we're we're running a little, little over time here. But uh, the engineering grind continues. So next week, expect uh, the Zendu sidechain and Zendu mainchain libraries to be published. Um, that's really another big deal for us on our path to beta. And a thought that I had um, talking to Michael in our community was that um, you know the, the publishing of Gingerlib and the um, you know improvement that Ulrich identified and, and fixed on Zexy. Or just examples of how we've gone from being consumers of innovation to now producers of innovation. And this is huge. Uh, this is a process, though, and it's something that we're really just now seeing the culmination of years worth of work in, in work here. I mean, organizationally to attract the right kind of talent and to focus that talent on you know, some of the most productive things going on in the industry. Um, it takes time, though, and that's what we have to realize um, that I wish we could just snap our fingers and see some amazing, uh, you know, technology deliveries and applications running already on our network. Um, but there's a huge grind and enormous amount of work that goes into all of that. So, um, see, our, my, my big topic here is, is talking about the financial stability of our ecosystem. So this is really important, and, and it transcends the Zen Blockchain Foundation. But having, uh, we, we as an ecosystem have some advantages that others may not have. Um, so let's focus on what those are and, and then also think about what can we do to, to be even better. So we're fortunate to have a few solid like actual legal entities within our organization. You've got this organization, the Zen Blockchain Foundation, you have Horizon Labs, and you have Horizon Labs Italia. So we have three organizations uh, specifically focusing all of their attention, all of their capital and efforts on, on Horizon, building out this ecosystem from technology to you know community building. And because we have actual legal entities, we can do things like raise capital. Uh, we can do things like um, raise traditional VC, right? We, we, we can participate in grant programs and tax credits, which Horizon Labs Italia actually 
uh, recently was awarded. Um, we can do things like participate in some of these government relief programs that are um, across multiple jurisdictions because we now span uh, U.S. jurisdiction as well as uh, EU and, and Italy. Um, so we have opportunities that maybe other projects may not have. And I can tell you we are have the intention of taking advantage of every single path that we can to make this ecosystem successful. So we're, we're approaching everything, including, and I think this is really important, uh, cultivating external revenues from outside of just cryptocurrency. Uh, so what I don't like is being so beholden to the price of Zen. Of course, we want to you know, um, build this ecosystem to be super successful and productive so that the price of Zen increases as, as a byproduct of that. But being able to do things like complex uh, projects with um, you know, programming schedules that extend beyond just the short term, it really helps to have other, other sources of capital and other sources of revenue for stability. And we're already doing that. So the growth team's already pulling in some revenues from um, you know, monetizing some of the massive amount of traffic we have on the faucet is just one example. But we're also thinking through some experiments on how to go from just linear input to linear output on, on what we do to um, you know, making, that, making that output either multiplicative or exponential. And one small example there is uh, looking at our faucet as potentially a service that others could white label or use in certain ways, in particular, if they're not competitive with Horizon. Maybe they're actually complementary. Um, an example there would be Brave Browser and why we promote the Brave Browser, because it's very complementary to our own goals for privacy. Um, so why not? Why not actually uh, focus some of that monetization on complementary stuff? So we're doing that, and, and we're doing all of it. And you know, like I said, count on us to do even more. And in the future, once we're actually not so the budget constraint isn't completely binding like it is right now, uh, we will focus on things like a reserve fund, some basic hedging operations. And hedging could be as simple, and I prefer simple, as just you know, storing savings in U.S. dollar or euro or something else that actually matches our outflows. And that's what hedging is all about. Hedging is about uh, making sure that your, f- your future cash flows, inflows, and outflows are matched not about trying to make a profit on on volatility in one direction or another. So we're going to be looking at everything. Um, we are already um, doing doing uh, everything within our power, and we're going to keep increasing that. And Jonathan made a great point that I, I paraphrased him or tried to quote him on a, one of our earlier team calls. He said, "If I'm not comfortable at work, it means I'm not pushing myself, not pushing my boundaries." And this is something that we're taking to heart and exploring different revenue opportunities is just an example of doing things that may not be traditional for crypto projects, but make complete sense. And other businesses all over the world do them. So why aren't we? Why aren't we looking at some of the IP that we're developing and monetizing in different ways? So we we are now and we're doing this in ways that I can tell you will feel uncomfortable in some ways. Like the idea of monetizing traffic to a particular marketing asset may make some people in our community uncomfortable, um, but it's also a reality of um, we're, we're partnering with complementary organizations and we're, we're bringing in more revenue. And that's a really positive thing for our ecosystem. And let's see, I, I can say in conclusion here, despite all the chaos uh, of current events and the macro uncertainty that continues to extend, uh, despite markets recovering very quickly, uh, we, we're very fortunate that we had a, a fairly sharp and quick uh, price recovery on Zen. Now, clearly not to the point that we were prior to this crisis, but uh, you know, well off the, the lows that we had in the initial shock and sell-off. And, and that's a really good thing. Um, immediate cost reductions helped align our budget. And we, and we did it quickly. And the reason we were able to do uh, cost reductions so so drastically and, and quickly uh, was because we'd been through this drill just a few months prior. Right, We're, we're coming out of a couple of year bear market We've gone through several iterations of cost cutting and budget controls in that bear market. So despite a few months of doing really well on the budget side, we were prepared to to simply just revert back to our prior plan. As soon as this happened, we did it quick, and and that's key. Another thing here that goes to just our organizational capital is is the idea of having great relationships with our partners. And you hear different team members talking about this, like Rowan today talking about our relationship with Flipside Crypto. Uh, But we have great relationships with many, many other partners that are parts of our ecosystem in different ways. And those relationships allow things like flexibility on contract terms and rates, particularly during adverse times like this. So we've been very fortunate there in, in you know, seeing an immediate payoff 
by having that kind of flexibility factoring into our, our cost controls. Um, and, and like I said, we're, we're also exploring these other initiatives to bring in more revenue, more capital. So just overall, uh, yeah, I can say we're, we're not doing too bad, but you know, I, I don't want to jinx anything, so I'll stop there. But uh, now let's, let's open it up to questions. And Lucy, do you have any mentee questions? Oh, yes, as always. Uh, so the first one is more of a, uh, uh, of a, uh, a request than, than a question. So I th he wants us to comment on acceptance of ginger. Sure. Uh, Alberto, do you want to talk about ginger? Uh, okay. I mean, I, I don't know if I understand correctly the, the question. I mean, if it is related to, uh, let me say, adoption, probably. Uh, in any case, uh, what we uh, what we have been seeing, I mean, uh, that uh, for example, uh, also because we have implemented the mixed FFT, uh, and this was something that was uh, currently missing on Zex. So for example, they uh, they now have a, uh, mentioned our implementation in our in a pull request that they have, and uh, moreover. I mean, we have, we have been seeing some signals of people that is interested in what we're doing and uh, and uh, understanding also, uh, let me say, what's, um, what could be ported to Zexe or what are the differences. So this is mainly the, um, the, um, the signals that we have found. But uh, let me say, we are, we are just at the beginning because we are continuously improving the library by adding tools that are going to be used and be useful for uh, developers uh, that are, uh, let me say, uh, that, that want to have uh, recursive proof composition and, and uh, um, let me say, all the tools that are uh, needed for um, creating a fast circuit. For example, another important part that uh, um, uh, we are uh, adding with, with Ginger is the uh, a very efficient implementation for Merkle trees. And this is, uh, uh, and, and Marcelo did a, a great job on this, and in particular, uh, let me say, uh, implementing optimization for, uh, uh, let me say, that are possible by calculating many ashes in, in parallel, and this could has been used for, uh, let me say, optimizing the algorithm that uh, is required to perform the hashes. So um, this is another important part that probably we have not yet, uh, let me say, um, described. And and, uh, and currently, the documentation, uh, yeah, Marcel is, is, is uh, uh, specifically working on, on the documentation for that. Uh, and this is something that, for sure, um, let me say, has some value, um, especially if we're thinking uh, about scenarios where we need to compute a lot of hashes. And uh, um, and for sure, we, uh, I mean, we hope that this will attract even even more uh, developers. That's it. Well, thank you, Alberto. Um, so the second question is, uh, does Horizon outsource marketing? I see a lot of being done, YouTube videos, Twitter posts, etc. Percentage A percentage of bar, a budget goes to marketing. Okay. Um, well, I'm, I'm, I can answer to that. Um, You're uh, pretty qualified I'm, to answer this. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm very proud to say that we do all of these things in-house because we have an awesome team. Um, it made me very happy to know that people have started noticing the amount of work being done uh, and then all the, all the beautiful visuals, including graphic designs, and videos are created by our very, very uh, talented in-house design team, uh, Linda and Marco, and our very popular communications manager, Erica, manages all our social media platforms that engage with our community and then addresses uh, community concerns. Um, you know, and then everyone else really from within the team always supports what marketing team is doing and provides ideas. Um, and so it's it's really a, a teamwork for sure. But uh, we are, you know, I'm, I'm very proud to say that we uh, we do that. You know, everything is generated within our, uh, you know, in, in house. Uh, and uh, we do have a very uh, um, 
a limited uh, uh, budget, but you know because but we find ways to operate very efficiently, uh, at, you know, and then uh, at the same time maintain a very uh, high quality delivery, um, and then it's all made possible, you know, because that because because of the team really. You know, we have uh, truly the best team uh, in the industry, and I'm just very proud to be part of it. Um, that's all I want to say. And, and Rob, if you want, if there's anything that you want, that would like to add, please, please do. <laughs> <laughs> Other than I'm just super bullish on our marketing team. Uh, no, that was perfect, Lucy. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So um, the next question is... Uh, um, Oh, so can we have this item on our store? And then there's a link provided. And then the link is a, uh, a neon sign, neon store sign showing, uh, I think, crypto, uh, like certain cryptocurrencies accepted here. Well, I was, you know, I mean, everything is possible. Um, you know, it's not, we currently don't have a, uh, a big item like that, like a store, a neon store uh, sign. On our uh, store, but it's you know uh, we can definitely look into that. Uh, and then, but we do have other stickers, you know, uh, Zen accepted here stickers on our store, and then other stickers, uh, and along with some uh, other really cool uh, products, uh, including masks, uh, on our store right now with designs. Uh, so please check out. Uh, and at the same time, I'll definitely look into adding a neon sign on our store, you know, for our merchants as well. I think it's a pretty cool idea. For sure. Um, well, I think we are a little. Over. There's a very technical question. Um, uh, I, I do you think we can? I think we can answer to that. What do you think, Rob? Oh, I'm sorry, I missed that one, Lucy. Yeah, there's a one uh, one last uh, question. I think people are uh, interested sure. to know about about sure. sidechain. Um, so the question is: Would it be possible to re-bootstrap or recreate an in a uh, Advertently seized sidechain from its previous state can develop start over after running into unforeseen issues. So I know the perfect guy to answer this question. Over. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. The, the 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 short answer is no. Uh, why? Okay. Because when the um, uh, sidechain is considered seized by not submitting the certificate. Um, I mean, uh, it's uh, enabled a procedure that let users withdraw from that session. And this is, is something that is, uh, let me say, uh, guarantee users that would be able to withdraw from sites and that are, let me say, not functioning anymore. And this is, is a quite, it's a very important part. But obviously, um, this comes with the price because uh, uh, obviously, the state of the sidechain will not be uh, updated anymore. I mean, we are removing, uh, let me say, um, UTXOs, let us say, from from that from that sidechain uh, without even uh, respecting the rules of that sidechain. I mean, you will you will have to provide a proof that you had that coins. But uh, let me say, you can if the the, the side chain. Let me say, if that, for example, just to make a very simple example, uh, a time locked uh, UTXO. A time locked UTXO uh, could be locked for that epoch, but if the, the if the side chain has been seized. You should be able to withdraw that coins by providing the proof of having the private key, obviously. No, so this is a very simple example that explain clearly why is not possible to uh, let me say uh, making it alive again after having withdrawn something, because some other rules could have uh, let me say uh, could have relied on this lock. And these rules are not going to be, let me say, respected anymore if I withdrawn that coins directly from the main chain. No? So, uh, for this reason, uh, is not possible. But let me say, this is a, uh, in some way, we can see it as a feature because, in any case, even from a C side chain, you will be able to withdraw your coin and every user will be able to uh, get back 
uh, the coins that he had in that site. Thank you, Alberto, for the additional question. Um, uh, to answer the qu uh, additional question, so uh, so these are the top well four questions today. Uh, Weekly Insider will post the rest of the questions and answers on the uh, Weekly Insider chat channel here on Discord. Uh, well, that's it. Thank you and stay safe. Back to you, Angie. Awesome. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Have a great day and night, and I hope to see you all guys soon. Take care.